everybody. I'm Audrey Moore, the Audrey Helps Actors Podcast. And today we have episode 110. Pew, pew, choo, choo. 2024. La, la, la. La, la, la. 2024 season galore. We have an incredible episode for everyone today. This is transformation colon hair. Fake hair. Don't care. I am super excited about Self Tape May this year. And one of the things I really want everyone to experiment with is transformation, transforming ourselves. So I have the one, the only, Raisa Patton here, and she is incredible. She is a hair person, a department head, a board member of the 706 Local, which if you don't know what that means, it's the hair and makeup union in IATSE that does all of the wonderful work when you go to a hair and makeup trailer in Los Angeles. I mean, Raisa has worked on like everything. She's worked on Key and Peele, Entourage, Avengers Endgame, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, woo woo, shout out, James Gunn, and like so many others because she is one of the best in the biz. We're gonna try on wigs. We're gonna talk about casting. We're gonna talk about the proper way to go in and talk to somebody in hair if you are wearing a hairpiece, men or women. So that way you're preparing yourself and a set in order for you to feel comfortable and confident going in. When we met during the food bank, she was like legend. She came every week, she was so incredible. And then every single person who came was like, Race is here? Race is the best. And I was like, I know. So I wanted to have her on. So this is season nine and we are feeling just fine. We have had, we've had a hard few years. So if you are feeling like you need to pick me up, I am hoping that this will be the season that will do that for you. We are also adding, as you can see, a video component, component, to our audio podcast, podcast, So that way everyone can have some videos, share, spread the information even wider. I really want everyone to have as much access as possible. I am a big fan of access to free, frizzle free, my favorite price, free information. So I hope that you find these videos helpful. And also we have a full podcast. If these little clips don't satisfy you, go ahead, look at the Audrey Helps Actors podcast, give it a listen while you're doing the dishes or whatever. Long drive, commute to your audition, whatever it is. You're not auditioning in person. Commute to your reader, several minutes away. Let's talk self-tape May. Self-tape May. We are on our sixth year of Self-Tape May and I am truly thrilled. Self-Tape May is 16 tapes in the month of May. Can you do it? That's it. Can you do 16 self-tapes in the month of May? Everyone is always like, oh my God, I really want a ton of auditions. And then they get like four auditions in a month and they're like, oh my God, that was a lot. Cause it is a lot. So if you want a volume of auditions, please practice before you get the volume so that you're prepared. The challenge is free. All you do is pay nothing contribute in your videos, posting your videos with the hashtag self tape may on Instagram. You can also sign up at self may.com. There's nothing that really happens when you sign up. It gives you like a little, like a little image. It's like, I did it. I'm doing self tape may. And then you can post it, which is fun. So people can know if you want to do a fake account or a private account, that is absolutely fine. You can do a Finsta account, a fake Instagram account. A lot of people in the beginning, they just want to do like, just like a little like personal experimentation. And I encourage you to do that. We have a couple of like objectives themes this year. I want transformation and the show that I'm encouraging people to mess around with, play with because it's super fun is Bridgerton. I mean, I will take the whole Bridgerton universe, Bridgerton, Queen Charlotte, whatever it is, get dressed up, put those wigs on, curl that hair, do a little, just put, grow that beard and make it so beautiful and handsome, do a little ascot. I want just gowns, I want gowns, I want crowns, I want gowns and crowns, gowns and crowns gowns, crowns and gowns and crowns, and an ascot. That's what I want from you. And we are also going to have some neutral scenes, also known as open scenes. So these are scenes that have no story to them. 
They are made in order for you to make strong choices of who am I talking to? Who am I talking about? What is the environment? What is the tone of the show? And ideally, you can take one of these neutral and open scenes and you can do them 16 times, 16 different ways, in 16 different genres, as 16 different characters, talking to 16 different characters. We are partnered with Castability again this year, and it is going to be such a wonderful journey with them. They are always so helpful. If you are a person who's like, sides, oh my God, where do I find sides. What about sides? Castability is going to have plenty of sides for you. I highly encourage you to check them out. It's a wonderful service, an incredible way to practice. And they have a fantastic neutral scene, open scene, whatever you want to call it for you to mess around with and play with. And doesn't that sound fun to do a neutral open scene one way and then see how everyone else is doing their neutral open scene? I think that sounds incredible. We're also going to have some alternative ones that we're going to post on the website. We'll have some links because the internets, you guys, they've got some as well. But really the castability one, I would love to see as many versions as humanly possible to watch and enjoy. This episode is brought to you by Castability. That's castability.actor for all of the free sides that you want. This episode is also brought to you by Self Tapes here. The one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Jeff Pride, ladies and gentlemen. Go see Jeff Pride at Self Tapes here and practice maybe with a coach if you want to. Then when you get auditions, you'll be prepared. This is also brought to you by Carla Zuniga Hair. That's Carla Zuniga Hair. Carla is incredible and she does hair systems for men and women. If you think that the actors in Hollywood are not all wearing hair pieces, you are mistaken. You are mistaken. Carlos Zuniga Hair on Instagram. All right. I hope you are on your way to an audition in person. I don't know. That would be cool, weird, but cool. I hope that you have a Zoom audition because that great union of ours fought for it. So you got it. I hope you have time because you also got that and you fought for it. And so I hope you have time to actually prepare and have a life. Isn't that incredible? And I hope that you book it. Book it! Audrey helps actors because they don't know anything. Hi, everybody. I'm Audrey Moore with the Audrey Helps Actors podcast. And today we have... Raisa Patton, hairstylist. I'm a member of IATSC Local 706, which represents makeup and hairstylists in the Los Angeles area. But of course, we travel all over the world. Mm -hmm. And when you travel, is it still this 706 umbrella, even if you're in... Budapest or Atlanta or whatever. We just have to fly out of Los Angeles. Wonderful. Well, I wanted to have you on today because this year I want to nurture our community. We have all been under so much stress for the last several years, and I want community to be a big part of the podcast season this year. I want to talk about sustainability. I want to talk about story. I get so many actors who want to talk to me about casting. And one thing that I do that I know a lot of actors do is that we just simply mess around with our hair. We do that all the time. And it is one of my most favorite parts of working on sets is coming and talking to hair and makeup and wardrobe and props and really getting into all of the little things that will help bring my character to life. So I thought I should really have a conversation with somebody as qualified as you to discuss what that is, what are the standards, what are some no-nos and some go-tos and some yes-yeses. And so I'm really grateful to have you on. We actually met this last year. I, first of all, on behalf of, we're going to start crying right away, on behalf (laughs) of SAG-AFTRA and the WGA, I just want to thank you all so much at IOTC and Teamsters for being such an incredible support system. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling so much love within the community right now. 
as we all really were so separated from each I, other. You're going to make me cry. Okay. And I'll tell you, I'm a person that spent a lot of time on picket lines. Mm -hmm. And every time someone would drive by and honk, mm -hmm. I would be like, don't cry, don't cry. I had to bring <laughs> tissues with me because I felt so much support, not just from within our film community, mm -hmm. but from the public. So, you yeah. know, when the news starts saying unions are at this all time high mm -hmm. of public recognition and appreciation mm -hmm. and more people want to be a member of a union than have happened since the 50s. I'm saying, yeah, I feel it. Yeah. I really feel it. Yeah, I do too. And it's so welcome after so many years of isolation as we were isolated both in our own rooms and also separated with masks and all of that. It is so heartwarming to be a part of each other's community again and really get to celebrate the unique artistry that each faction of this industry brings to the table in collaboration. Yeah, I agree. I, I feel very lucky that we're doing this the day after what I think was one of the best Oscars I have seen in years and years. For me, I, you know, I sort of have these memories of other Oscar moments, but Nothing was like last night. I felt like it was all of Hollywood coming together. I saw a clip of Emma Stone who, you know, they step out, right? Yeah. And she looks up at the monitor and she sees that her makeup team won. It's really funny. You should look it up. But she's in the middle of a conversation. She looks up at the screen and she goes tearing out of there, holding her dress together <laughs> so she could be in the room when the makeup team won for her movie, which I thought was like... I mean, there were so many moments, you know, bringing the whole crew on stage. It, it was really, it was a very special Oscars. It really was. I felt that the community and the love, the mutual passion for all of what we do as a whole collaborative process was really there. So I'm absolutely with you. I'm, I watched it last night and also couldn't wait for us to have this conversation today. First, I want you to tell everyone what sorts of shows you've worked on, how long you've been doing hair in general, when did you join the union? Okay, so I started doing hair in a salon. I started assisting. I got a work permit. I was 12 years old and I was like making coffee and washing hair. Since you were 12? I told my parents when I was four that I wanted to be a barber. I, I don't think I understood the difference between a sure. barber and a hairstylist. Sure. I think I meant hairstylist, but I definitely said barber. <laughs> You know, I was definitely one of those kids that was cutting my Barbies, but I was imitating these Vidal Sassoon asymmetrical haircuts. So my mother was kind of boasting about me doing these haircuts, but they still were not very encouraging when I thought I want to be a hairstylist. Sure. Um, my father compared it to being a short order cook. So <laughs> he said, you do something else. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I love what I do. I chose it because I definitely had this idea that you should love what you do. So I felt confident I was going in the right direction. And I pushed through beauty school. And I started to go to makeup school because I did want to work in show business. Mm. And I was under the impression because you talk to these people and, and you see these awards like the Oscars that presents a makeup artist and hairstylist award. Right. I was familiar with that. I thought you had to do both. Mm. It turns out in the United States, that's one of the things you don't do. You actually choose the one that mm -hmm. you feel you are stronger in and do the one. I'm very relieved. I was never by any means a makeup artist. You know, I could put like basic beauty sure. makeup on and do commercials. And I did that for many years, but it was not what I wanted to do. I did it just because it was necessity. And that's how I first got a hairstyle that I created in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. But I did some print. I did some runway. I did commercials for about 10 years. And then I moved to Los Angeles in 1998. And like so many, I worked really hard on independent film mm. to get enough days mm. to get in the union. In 2000, I did a movie with Matt Dillon in Cambodia. Oh. And he then came back to the United States and was doing a film that he was starring in that was doing something, we call it a flipper. So basically they have enough of a budget that the IATSC is trying to organize them to shoot that film union. Mm -hmm. So uh, he asked for me and I met with the producer and she said, I think this is gonna go union. And I was like, okay, great. You know, I, I wasn't in the union yet. And that's that's it, ultimately that? how I got in so that, and you know, that movie in Cambodia for me was one of the most epic experiences. Mm. I was in Cambodia, Thailand, and Vietnam, and it was 
I, I made lifelong friends. Um, I would compare it to the people that, you know, went to college in a group mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. were in the military in a group. And there's just always a closeness. In fact, we had a solidarity rally and I bumped into the director of photography from that film. Really? And I haven't seen him in like, oh God, maybe 10 years. Yeah. And, you know, there, it's like no time has passed. So much yeah. love. Yeah. I love that. So you've done commercials, you do movies, you do television, all of that, which I love. And also I wanted to just talk about the food bank that we worked on together. This is how I was like, I love this woman. First of all, every single person that came by, there were, I wanted to really make sure to reach out to the IATSE and locals for this food bank, which was helped run by a Jeff and also food for health. And it was a farmer's market. It was really beautiful. And you volunteered basically every weekend, which was so wonderful. And I really wanted the crew to really get their dibs in terms of food and support, because I was aware the actors are really used to going months without jobs. And so that's part of the reality of what we are and how we're structured. Whereas crew is much more used to going job to job to job to job with some things in between. But generally speaking, there's a lot of production here usually, and there is a more consistency in that work environment. And it was so great just so everyone knows, I'll talk to the camera. Everyone was like, Reza is amazing. Reza is the best. And it was really wonderful. And I could tell and could see that that was true. And I wanted to offer haircuts to people for free who had been going through these strikes because in the 2007 strike, when I was a wee babe here in Los Angeles, I actually didn't get my hair cut for a year and a half because I didn't have the money for it. And I just know how much a haircut brings you back to life, helps you out of depression, helps you just feel valuable and valid. And it really is just such a wonderful lift. And I just want to tell everyone about <laughs> these haircuts that she did. There was one gentleman in particular that had the best curly hair. Do you remember who I'm talking yep. about? And it had grown out too far. It had been too long. And you performed magic on this young gentleman. And shout out Jack Lube. And when he finished, I was like, oh my God, can you believe this haircut you just got? And he was like, it is really great. I was like, this is a really amazing haircut. He was very appreciative. Oh, he, well, as he should be. So thank you so much for A, doing that. And I just want everyone to know that she also reached out to members of uh, the 706 local hair and makeup here and helped to recruit many other incredible people to help and assist that. We were also able to do makeup makeovers and all of those things. I don't know. I got into this industry to play dress up. So any of that is just such a wonderful give. So thank you so much for that. It I really was a pleasure. It. Mm -hmm. And and by the way, I think that us all working together was good for not just the spirits of us, the group that were volunteering, mm -hmm. but the group that was receiving. Mm -hmm. I even think that the people that knew that was happening, that didn't feel that they were in a situation where they needed to receive, mm -hmm. still felt happy it was happening and it was happening in such a collaborative force. Because mm -hmm. I think sometimes there's this idea that we don't support one another. Right. And I think that that was a perfect example of just the opposite. I agree. Yeah, that we're all in this together. Yeah. Because we are stronger united. We are. Hey. <laughs> solidarity. <laughs> ah, solidarity. Okay, great. So let's talk about communication between the actor and hair department and collaboration. I had posted something maybe a year ago about my work on Dope Sick. And in my particular role for that, it was a time change role. So it went from this year to a decade later and then to later that weekend, but really a, a dramatic change in all of the looks, right? And I specifically knew that I wanted my hair to be really buoyant and bright in the first parts because she was healthy. She was a mother of five, an executive secretary living in Connecticut based off of a real person, by the way. 
And then she becomes addicted to Oxy. And so you see her 10 years later and I wanted her to look professional, but much more worn down, much more like somebody who doesn't have the time and energy to spend on her hair and her makeup. And then later on in the hospital, when she is really going through it, I wanted even more of that, more breakdown in terms of what the look does in terms of her hair. So I had posted about the hair and I asked for Hillary Clinton, like 1998 hairstyle. And boy, did they deliver. I wanted lots of volume, kind of helmety. And I had posted that and a lot of the listeners had commented that they didn't know you could do that. They didn't know that an actor could come in and give collaborative direction of what they wanted for their character. Let's talk about that process just a little bit. So I'm a tool Mm -hmm. in that situation. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't have ideas, but I'm a tool that is somehow going to manage the creative aspirations of writer, director, producer, and actor. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest, and I hope that people that hire me are not listening to this. I tend to be on the actor side Mm -hmm. because I have this idea that they really see this character as it is. And I just haven't had an experience where they're wrong. Mm. So occasionally you have a director where you'll have a producer that's like, Oh, I don't want to do that. For example, you know, I think we should put her in a wig. Mm -hmm. We don't want to spend that money. Mm -hmm. So we will go up against those things and try to figure out how to work through them Mm -hmm. in a collaborative fashion. Mm -hmm. But that's the reason I do this job. You know, we talked about my career. So after I get in the union, I am a mom Mm -hmm. and I get this amazing job at Mad TV. So I spent three seasons at Mad TV with a wig cabinet that is bigger than this room, right? Just tell people a little bit about what Mad TV is because we have lots of kiddos. because they don't know. Yeah. So Mad TV was LA's answer to Saturday Night Live. Exactly. Um, So it was a sketch comedy show. It was filled with some of the great sketch comics of our day Mm -hmm. that you now see probably in regular films. People like Jordan Peele and Keegan-Michael Key and Ike Barinholtz, Bobby Lee. So these people would be five or six different characters in In a a matter of a couple hours, Mm -hmm. right? And again, I think I already had this sort of creative intuition to understand people because I love people so much. So I pay attention to how they look and I have the way a person looks and how we could alter that type of person so that you would find it suited for this character as you perceive them. Mm -hmm. But having that experience with so much hair at Mad TV was otherworldly for someone who does hair because I had a wig that could be for everything. And I had the most amazing boss who supported me and felt I was talented because sometimes he would be like, I don't care about the background in this sketch. Mm. And I'd be like, Oh, but just because it's Sherlock Holmes, can we just not have that guy with the shaved sides? Let's just put a wig on him with Mm. his little cap, please. And he'd be like, go ahead, Gorby. (laughs) Call me Gorby for Reza Gorbachev. (laughs) And it was amazing. So I feel like that was this amazing place to leap off of in the rest of my career. I had access to things that I think the average hairstylist that starts off just working on a TV show does not have. You know, you walk Mm. into one of our great beauty supplies where you can buy wigs. We have Nigel's. We have friends. There's small beauty supplies all over Los Angeles that sell wigs. But you don't get to try them on and play play with them and see what they do. Yeah, Having those wigs and putting them on people... And watching that same person change dramatically from two hours ago with makeup's amazing collaboration. But changing one's hairstyle can really change who they appear to be. And it can really help your performance. So your amazing performance when you have a red beanie on Mm -hmm. is one thing. Mm -hmm. But if we could make you into a 75-year-old woman who has been living with her partner for 75 years at the oldest living gay woman in Los Angeles Mm -hmm. who has had to protect their relationship through generations and generations just from hair and makeup. I know. It's amazing. We saw it in the Oscars and I think we see it on television. Um, I hope we see it on television. We do. But back to your point, I just felt like that was important stuff to talk about. You've always had the ability to reach out to us and talk about what your needs are. 
we always want to collaborate with you. Television often has very little prep between episodes. I'm shooting episode one and I'm prepping episode two at the same time while I'm sitting on set watching actors for episode one. Mm -hmm. It becomes very difficult to call every single person. But I can tell you when someone reaches out to me, I always get back to them. Mm -hmm. And now it's codified in your contract. So please reach out. I love that collaboration. It makes everything be like, oh, you're who I talked to on the phone. And it makes it just a little bit easier. I agree. Yeah. One of the things that I'm a really big fan of is, first of all, I want everyone's job to be easier and better. That's my goal on sets. Is I'm just like, we're all great at what we do. Some people are going to be really tired because they're on like day 98 of this project. And maybe I'm coming in for the week. And so I feel like, oh, well, I can bring my energy and I can bring some interest and some enthusiasm and jolt a little life into here, which is wonderful. If I am working a network television show, say that's shooting here in Los Angeles, I will often have my wardrobe fitting on the studio lot where they're also shooting the show. And so I will go to wardrobe and before I do that, I will let whoever the coordinators are that are contacting me, whether that's a second AD or a production coordinator. And I say, hey, can I get the email to whoever's doing hair just so I can let them know that I'm also going to be stopping by to talk to them about my hair after wardrobe? And then I just email and I say, hi, my name's Audrey. I'm playing Julia this week in episode 302. And I just wanted you to know I have a wardrobe fitting on set at the studio on Monday at 10 a.m. I believe you're also going to be on set. And I wanted to just double check and see if it's okay if I stop by the hair trailer and talk to you just a little bit briefly about my hair. Which is great. And by the way, with technology Mm -hmm. now, If I'm not at the studio, we have FaceTime. You're so right. So it's amazing. It's great. But that communication, we love it. Mm -hmm. And it's just nice not to have a shock, too. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to do. So there are things that people have that, you know, someone might say, I just wanted to tell you, you know, my scalp gets a little eczema. I'm sensitive to certain products. So I'll bring some things. Is that okay? Of course it's okay. Um, You know, or there are people that wear a wig when Mm -hmm. they audition for various characters And by the way, some of those wigs, it's like, sure, if I saw the audition tape, which I sometimes don't. Yes. I know it's a wig. Yes. But also there are wigs out there that I don't immediately know in an audition Mm -hmm. tape. They're a wig. And it really is good to know because I could make a plan based on one of those other creatives that are involved in our process. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, you know, because she's running and then chasing this bus, Mm -hmm. we want to make sure her hairs back her up. And if I know you're in a wig, Mm -hmm. I can combat that conversation and turn it around. What if we do half up, half time? What if we put her sides back? This is kind of silly examples, but they're real things that happen. Honestly, I want to applaud that because what you are talking about is that you are given information that now becomes important, collaborative understanding of what the director maybe doesn't know which is that the actor is going to be in a wig and you don't want the actor to lose a job because they're in a wig. And so you then become the advocate for the actor absolutely, without anybody even knowing it. That's so beautiful. And I just want everyone to understand like, that's correct. That's what happens. And also I want people to know in the email, if I emailed you to contact you and say, hey, I'm in episode 302 and I'm wearing a wig, I will send you my audition in advance because it's all self tapes now anyway. I will send you the link. I will say, just so you know, this is what I looked like in the audition. And I will see you on Monday after my wardrobe fitting if you're available. Because by the way, if you don't do that, Mm -hmm. what I get is a headshot, which is generic. God knows what they're wearing. Yeah. Those other people that Mm -hmm. have a say in the Mm -hmm. way you end up looking Mm -hmm. that help me and you Mm -hmm. come to some conclusion, Mm -hmm. they take that headshot and come up with All other ideas, ideas. yes. There's a couple different groups of people Mm -hmm. that I have to get through. Mm -hmm. Some are super creative Mm -hmm. and some are super conscious of money and time. Yes. And then there's the two of us. Right. That want the character to come through, especially when it's transformative, Mm -hmm. right? Because that's, that's one of the amazing things. You know, you take an actor like Gary Oldman, sometimes you don't know it's Gary Oldman. I love that. I mean, I do feel that I'm one of the actors that my face 
really changes depending on the hair and makeup and outfits that I wear. And it also does help me get into character. You know, I put the hair on and I go, oh, hey, hey, girl, there she is. But wait, Raisa, wait, you incredible soul on this planet. I have to interrupt you. Help me. I need some help. And now it's time for listener questions. I'm so scared. This listener question is brought to you by Castability. That's castability.actor. And here's how you get your free sides. You go, you download the app for free, and then they are going to send you a promo code and it's going to give you the sides for free, okay? Like a ton of them. They said they have a ton of sides. They've got a ton of sides for you. How much is a ton? You're gonna find out. They are all original scenes written by their incredible writer's room. So I highly encourage you to take advantage of that. But wait, that's not all. Do you do you think maybe I want to take this self-tape may up a notch, maybe, and I want casting to see my tapes? Well, wouldn't you know that that's exactly what Castability does? If you want feedback from a casting director on your self-tape, please go to castability.actor. They're going to give you data on your strengths, your weaknesses by real casting professionals who will give you feedback in five categories, believability, specificity, creativity, personality, and finally castability, which is their way of saying like, this is the person that won the role. Now you don't have to, if you're like, Audrey, I just trying to survive self tape made. That's great. That's great. But if you are a person who wants it like a little extra challenge, a little more motivation, a little like extra bump, a little something, castability.actor to get some casting directors to take a little look-see. And for Self Tape May, Castability is offering one free, here's my tape, and then casting is going to look at it and give you some data and feedback, which I think is great. Like just at least do the free one. Do the neutral scene and then do the free one. I think that sounds awesome. Please visit castability.actor slash Self Tape May for free sides, the free neutral scene we're doing, and for your free submission to their casting professionals. Win-win wins, winny win wins. You know, my favorite price free. Hi, Audrey. I'm Krista Johnson. I'm a Seattle actor. And first off, I just want to say thank you so much for making this awesome podcast, especially after being out of the game for a few years while pregnant. It's so fun to get back into it. So on to my question. The first one is, is it normal for your agent to take 20% in Seattle is 20% on top of agency fees that are paid by the clients? I've been in the game for so many years and every time I book a job, I'm always surprised. And I just want to make sure that like, this is right. And this is normal because then they're being paid like 40%. I mean, obviously only 20 is coming out of my pocket, but it just seems like a lot when the client is already paying them. And then my other question is, so they take the 20% out of my full taxes. Is there a way I can note on my taxes that part of that money that it says that I was paid went to my agent? Those are my questions. And hopefully you will know the answers. Hey, thank you again. And bye. Okay, so is the 40% normal? There's a difference between normal and okay. So I would like to clarify the difference. Is it normal with particularly non-union agents? The non-union jobs do a fee for you and then they have an agency fee, which is usually like plus 20%, plus whatever percent, right? And yes, the non-union agents are always, I would say, taking the 20% out of your paycheck that you earned and taking the agency fee. Is that common? Yes. Is that nice, good, likable? I don't think so. There's arguments for it that non-union is making less and so they need more volume and so they are taking more money. The agency fee is for the agent. So I'm of the opinion that that's their fee. 
But that's not their opinion. And because it's non-union, there is nobody to enforce it. There just isn't. And in terms of the taxed amount, yes, they charge you off of the pre-tax amount. So if you make $1,000 plus, they say, $200 agency fees. So now they're getting $400. And 200 of that 400 is you. It's from you. It's your cut. It's your cut to them. It's off of the 1000 So probably on taxes, you're making $600. So let's run that math. So you're making $600. They are getting their $200 agency fee that the client is paying. And then you have to pay them out an additional $200. So you are now making $400 on that job. And your agent is making $400 on that job. I have many thoughts about that. Mostly join the union. That's mostly what I think. In terms of being able to write that off, No, you can't. Once uh, Cheeto colored president changed the tax laws so that you cannot itemize deductions, you just get like one base deduction. You can no longer say, well, I'm paying my employee, so I am going to deduct this $200 from my taxes. But that's not true. The only way to get around that is to incorporate. When you incorporate, you get to itemize your deductions. That's up to you. I hope that helps. And I know that in small markets, you sort of are limited in your options. But is it normal? Yes. Do I like it? No. This listener question is brought to you by Jeff Pride at Self Tapes here. So one thing that can be really great for Self Tape May, if you want to start practicing with a coach, here's the thing. Jeff Pride, this is real. He has been a session runner for like 20 years. He is a working actor in commercials and theatrical. I have not had a single person say anything other than Jeff Pride is amazing. People go to Jeff and they're like, Audrey. Jeff is so great. And I'm like, I know. Because he is, because he's incredible. He's fantastic with very seasoned actors, and he's incredible with actors who are brand new. His range is fantastic. I couldn't recommend him more highly. Jeff Pride at Self Tapes here on Instagram. Okay, do you have stories? Do you have questions, problems, issues, realizations? Please. Call us at 667-ACTOR-70. That's 667-ACTOR-70. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. So I want to talk about, we talked about fake hair just now, and I really want to talk about that because I brought a bunch of wigs with me today. These are wigs that I have purchased. They're in my stash, and I'm very open about bringing and using hair pieces as a part of my collaborative process. One of the things I wanted to talk about also in terms of just basics. So we show up on set in case people don't know or are not sure if you auditioned and you had a full beard and long scraggly hair, don't shave the day that you go to set because you're going to work because they're booking you off of the look that you presented. Also, sometimes hair will say, don't wash your hair because it's good for this look. Or make sure you come with a clean, fully dried hair. Some people takes four hours to dry some people's hair. Dry hair is a big one. So dry hair is a big one. And then also some things in terms of, I like that you brought up eczema and certain things like that, that if you have maybe skin things that are a concern for you, discuss that with the hair person ahead of time. And then I really want to talk about hair pieces and the normalization of that because I don't know about you, but girl, every time I'm on set, I'm the only one not wearing hair. It's me. And every single woman, every single man has got so much hair happening. And so they'll have like a hair station. And then I will see all these wig stands and I will see hair piece, hair piece, hair piece, hair piece, hair piece, piece. six hair pieces for one male actor. Oftentimes I do a lot of period pieces. So oftentimes for various time jumps that will be used and tons of hair extensions. I mean, they're always putting hair extensions on me. So it is kind of sad and perplexing to me that there is this idea that we have like the one hairdo and that's the one we get to use. And if the character doesn't fit that one hair style, then you're not going to get the role. Because now, especially with self-tapes, it really feels like 
the person that can just be Star Trek lifted out of the tape and put onto the set is so much of the person that's booking the role. So wait, do you feel that the actors are not transforming themselves a little in their self tapes? Is that what we're talking about? Because not, not, I think it's a 50-50 thing. I agree, but I also think that a lot of actors are being told by the industry, who I don't believe is always as informed as they could be, not to wear wigs, not to have hair pieces, not to have those options available to you, but that essentially your look is your look. And then whatever your look is, is how you work. And if you don't have that I look- I think that's false. Well, I, I, that's completely yeah, false. Yeah, I think it's false. That's absolutely false. And I false. would tell you, obviously I do this for a living, so sure. I have wonderful relationships with a lot of actors of all levels. Yes. There are some people that don't have to do self-tapes. That's they right. just get cast. There are other people that are doing these self-tapes and people will always contact me. I mean, you could go through my phone now. There's a million messages where they're saying, so I'm auditioning for this role. What do you think I should do with my hair? It's this, this, and this. It's mm. this period. And I will send them a couple finished look ideas and a set with rollers. I mean, I had someone okay. that was on vacation with their fiance and got this self-tape for something she was really interested in. And they wanted her to be this sort of celebrity from my youth, from the 70s, mm -hmm. who, her name is Loni Anderson. Are you familiar with her? Maybe not everybody is. She was married to Burt Reynolds. Anyway, she had this very flowery bang. Mm. This girl doesn't have a flowery bang. But I told her, do this. And I think if you get it curly enough up here, you can do something yeah. that'll give you that. And one of the things that is hard for a lot of actors and why I'm very pro-wig is because quite simply, a lot of actors do not have a skill set with hair. Now, I'm fortunate in that I started playing with my hair when I was like three and I never stopped. I love rollers. I love curling irons. I love hair dryers. I love wigs. I just have the best time with it. But I'm very aware that about 50% of the actors I come across have absolutely zero skill set when it comes to their own hair. And also, not for nothing, it can take a lot of the prep time. If I'm doing a period piece, which I'm almost always doing a period piece, it can be a really long, excruciating process of prep time for me to do my own period look. And so I do tell actors like, listen, if maybe you have naturally very curly hair and straightening it is going to maybe do some damage or you don't want it straightened for the next few days because of another role maybe you're auditioning for, getting a wig that does what your hair does when it's straight and just know that when you book the job, they'll straighten your hair for you. And that is absolutely fine. Another thing is for a lot of actors, they don't have the skill set for period looks. And so I said, well, get a period wig already ready and have it. So that way, when you're doing a period audition, that look is already there because you don't have the so skill set. I don't think that's the worst idea, but okay. this me. is where I would be concerned. Yes. I think that Wigs are very expensive. They are. And as you've already stated, you have a skill set to mm -hmm. manage that. If somebody goes and gets some Amazon 1920s wig, I agree. they're going to pop it on. They could do a great self-tape mm -hmm. and the wig should not be taking away mm -hmm. from their acting. Absolutely. It has to enhance it. So that's where I would be concerned. I would say decide what your comfort level is mm -hmm. with that thing. But it's true that having a wig that looks similar to your hair or even just a wig that you could style in a certain way but not be stuck with that style all day when mm -hmm. you're running or you have another self-tape to do mm -hmm. where you're looking just like yourself. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing I think you want to be conscious of. Yeah, you don't want to end up looking like a Halloween costume. I always tell people, if it looks like a clown, stop it. And also, you may need to, if this is something that's interesting to you as an actor, and I'm aware, I, I, listen, I know it's not fair. I want to really say this to actors. I'm going to say it to you in the camera. I know it's not fair that now we have to do our hair and our makeup and our lighting and our sound and our editing. And I know that that's not fair. And I wish that we could have our hair back in a ponytail and wear a black t-shirt and say, imagination, yeah. ascend, right? But that is currently not what's happening. And maybe you're watching this video in six years and we've gone back to that and great. But at this moment, that's not 
seeming to be true. And so I want to say that I know that and it's not fair and it's another expense of time, energy, and money that we are all having to deal with. Is there any positives to that? It depends. I would say it's six and one half dozen the other for a lot of people. I don't mind self-tapes and I didn't mind the room. There are benefits to both for me and some genres are better on tape and some genres were better in the room. I have the benefit of being a person who got really good at self-tapes because of my self-tape practice uh, before we went full self-tapes. I also had the benefit of several years of practicing going into the room to also get really good at being in the room. And that's why just as a personal preference for some people, they would rather get in their car and drive and go and sit and wait and have a collaboration with a casting director than have to sit in their place, get their dog to stop barking, talk about child care, wonder who's going to be yelling, the noise outside of the street, enough space that they're living in to properly put the light back far enough so they're not all in shadow, standing on an apple box so that it hits the frame but doesn't get the television. And, you know, it's like... It just is so individualized in terms of what everyone's unique circumstances are of what they're dealing with that for some people, yeah, they would have rather gotten on a train and gone and talked to a casting director. But for other people, they love the flexibility of going and being able to do it tonight in their house at seven o'clock at night and being able to take two to three hours if they want to, to mess around. But what I do know with the hair and makeup is that it can take a lot of time that a lot of actors, A, maybe don't have the skill set for, and B, feel that they should be using that time working on the acting. But wait, Raisa, wait. You incredible soul on this planet. I have to interrupt you. This listener question is brought to you by Carla Zuniga Hair. That's Carla Zuniga Hair. Carla does curls. She has a curl wizard. Carla does Jesse's hair. She does my hair. She does many of my friend's hair. What I really love about her is she goes slow. She loves a transformation cut too, everyone. If you are like transform myself during self-tape May, then go and get Carla to do a transformative cut. She loves, loves them. And what I really enjoy about the way that she works is that she checks in with you the whole time. And she's like, how's this? What about this? What do you think about this? She's not just like, la, 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 I'm doing this cut, blah, blah, blah. You get what you get, surprise. We've all had that experience and she does not do that. She is very methodical, careful, and communicative the entire time, which I love. And she also does hair pieces for men and for women. If you have a hairline, a receding hairline, a thinning, things like that, She is working with people to find solutions for that. She is trained. She's outstanding. She does lots of people that I know. So go and see her if you want to experiment with that. Contact her at Carla Zuniga Hair on Instagram. That's C-A-R-L-A-Z-U-N-I-G-A Hair on Instagram. Call us with your questions, 667-ACTOR-70. That's 667-228-6770. Hi, Audrey. We met a couple of times at the picket line. And thank you for everything you did during the strike and also to the food bank and everything. I have a question regarding agents. I did book a commercial agent as well as a theatrical agent. And they both want me to work non-union. And I don't know how to tell them that I only want to do union work. I was just wondering how to approach it. How to tell them, should I text them, should I call them and say, this is 2024, please send me on sag after a job only, or I would rather you send me on sag after a job. It's non-negotiable and that's what it is. But of course, you know, I'm scared I get dropped. I got booked with these two agencies that are pretty good and I don't want to burn any bridge. So I'd love to have your opinion. Thank you and happy new year. Happy New Year, beautiful. I love and adore you. And thank you so much for coming and volunteering so much, both on the lines and in the food bank this year. That was really so special. And I loved having you there and having your presence there. So OMG, let's talk about non-union commercial agents. Okay, my first question to you is, are you yourself a union actor? If you are a union actor and your agent 
is telling you you still need to go out for non-union jobs, that is bad. That is bad agent. Bad. Bad agent. The first thing you need to do is you need to call SAG-AFTRA and tell on them. You need to go tell on them. You could also not call. You could email at adsgounion at sagaftra.org. That's adsgounion at sagaftra.org and say, hey, I'm a union actor and this agent is pressuring me to do non-union jobs. And what happens is the agency is going to call them and yell at them and they will chide them. Now, I want you to be really clear. This agent is not going to know that you sent the email. And if you're worried about it, have a friend that has nothing to do with the agency send the email. And I just ask you, what agent wants you to do non-union work? Who is that? Who is like, you know what? I don't want you to make $40,000 off of this spot. Instead, I want you to make 400. That sounds like an agent to me that doesn't have relationships with casting directors for union jobs. So if you are union and they are telling you you need to go out for non-union jobs, then you need to report them and you need to tell them, thank you so much. You know, I was on the strike lines all year last year and I'm very involved in our union and our union doings. And I am not able to go out for non-union jobs. Thank you so much for your support and understanding. Now, if they email you back and are like, everyone does it, my entire roster does it. And if you don't, I'm going to drop you. My strong recommendation is that they can go themselves and just kindly say, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Goodbye. Thank you very much. There are plenty of union jobs. You guys, it is a lie. It is a lie that there aren't union jobs. It is a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. I can't, I know the numbers and I'm here to tell you it's a lie. The union jobs are there. They are actually plentiful and they make you real money. And so if your agent isn't interested or able in getting you those auditions, then that's not the agent you want to be working with. They're not thinking up. You got to move up. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Another thing I want to address is synthetic hair versus real hair and your preference and why. Synthetic wigs, if they're good, Mm -hmm. I call them shake and bake. Great. Because sometimes you have a wig Mm -hmm. that is just perfect. It's plastic. You Mm -hmm. don't have to use a lot of product on it. It's already formed in a hairstyle. As long as you're storing it gently without weight Mm. on it, you literally can just take it out of its bag, shake it and put it on. It's fantastic. Shake and bake. Yes. So that's wonderful. But it is true that very inexpensive synthetic wigs Mm -hmm. are typically challenging to work with. They can go up to three or four hundred dollars, but most of them end up about a buck, a buck fifty. That's right. So for a hundred dollars, hundred and fifty dollars at most. You could have a couple different colors, Mm -hmm. right? You could have a couple different lengths. And if you can adjust them, I think you could easily turn something in that works as the 40s to the 50s to possibly the 90s. I agree. Right? Just by moving the hair around, Mm -hmm. adding a bobby pin, Mm -hmm. whatever. And, And then you've got something that is, you know, in a price range that I think is affordable. Mm -hmm. The thing with, once you get to human hair, so there's different types of wigs. Some are made on lace caps, so they look a little bit more like hair Mm -hmm. out of one's head. Mm -hmm. And others are made on very different constructed caps. Some often leave complications as far as application. So then the application of that wig becomes problematic. Mm -hmm. But those lace wigs, you really have to do everything from start to finish. So those will run you anywhere from 1000 to 4000 when they're machine made. And now you've got something that might be able to transform your hair. I mean, mm-hmm. certainly if it's a color change mm-hmm. or something like this. But I would tell you for self-tapes, I think that those heat-resistant synthetic wigs are the way to go. Right. And most of the beauty supplies that carry wigs carry those. I know we use a company called Nigel's. Great. They deliver to the set, but they also have a retail area a and a wonderful area. wig room. Yeah. Friends, they don't have quite as large and extensive a collection of wigs, but mm-hmm. they have some. There's a company called Wilshire Wigs that's just moved. They used to mm-hmm. be in North Hollywood, but they also 
have some really good synthetic wigs. Their heat resistant ones are a little bit more expensive than those other places because mm-hmm. they're typically dealing with more of a retail market than, than Hollywood. Yeah, right. Sure. They have an extensive website, sure. but that's Wilshire Wigs. And I think they moved to Van Nuys Boulevard. Perfect. And we'll put those in the show notes just so everybody can get some links to where to go and how to go. So one of the things that I want to talk about, this is a really big thing that people are completely unaware of in a way that makes me angry, if I'm going to be honest, which is men wearing hair pieces, men wearing toupees or hair systems, whatever you want to call it. And it is so common. And I am rageful about the fact that there is this concept that women can wear extensions and dye their hair and do all these things. But then the moment a man does that, there's like something tacky about it or emasculating. And my experience is that if you look at the number of men over 30 in life who have thinning or balding hair versus the amount of Hollywood stars, actors whose faces you would recognize, there is a massive discrepancy going on. And I'm just here to tell everyone that everyone's wearing hair. I just want you all to know everyone is wearing hair. Listen, so, you know, as I explained to you, I do a lot of sketch comedy. I also yeah. happen to share my life with someone who does not have a lot of hair. Yes. There is not a wig that leaves my house without a try-on from Daryl Harrington. He takes selfies of himself. I love it. He loves hair. Yes. When he sees me cutting someone's hair, he's like, oh, I wish you could have cut my hair. <laughs> I loved getting hair cut. So, yeah, I totally agree. This is the pickle that you get in. So men, they don't style their hair, mm-hmm. even if they're wearing some mm-hmm. sort of hair piece. They're not really changing it up. They don't look in the mirror and say, oh, I'm going to change my part or I'm going to curl it or I'm going to put a pin in it. So I think that men have every right to have hair Mm -hmm. and we shouldn't discourage that. But I also think that it's very important to understand if you don't have options of hair, you might find yourself in a situation where someone like me is going to say, I really need to take your piece off. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it's not a color that was represented in this period or it's mm. not a shape. Does that help? I, I think that we want men to feel as confident as we want women to feel, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to their hair, if they're mm-hmm. losing it. Mm-hmm. I know, and you know that women who are losing their hair, this is a big struggle. And I don't think people are as sensitive mm-hmm. to this happening with men, but it's the same. It is the same. And I just want to say to everyone listening, we are going to move this podcast to a visual element where we are going to play with some wigs that I have brought and own. But I also want everyone to know that I am going to have Carla on who is going to be doing a couple of hair systems for everyone to see because I haven't met an actor yet, and this is true, that is struggling with what they feel are their casting options because maybe they're 25 and already don't have hair. And they are feeling like that's not representative of the kinds of characters that they want to play or are best suited to play. And I show them the options that are here in Los Angeles, in New York, in abundance. And they are shocked and amazed every time that that's even a thing. And so I just want you to know, times have changed in the days of terrible hair pieces. We've gotten really good. And so we're going to have some video and explanations of what that is. And also Mm -hmm. times have really changed as far as keeping your hair. I would tell you a man today does not need to go bald Mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. It is crazy. There's this doctor in Beverly Hills, Ian Ziering. Go to his Instagram. Mm -hmm. He will knock your socks Socks off. off. That's right. And so if you don't know what we're talking about, just Google it. And also I want you to know another thing that can be nice about a hairpiece for men is if you want variety, if you want to be able to be an actor that sometimes has a bald or balding head and is playing a certain kind of character that you like that for, but other times you might want to play a character that has a full thick head of hair and then what that might say about the character, then you get those options. And I just want men to know that not only is that a possibility, but it is in almost every single trailer I'm in. There is pieces for the men and their hair. Now, I do happen to book 80% period pieces and a lot of time jumps. So I think that is also part of it. But I just want you to know 
The hair team is equipped and understands and qualified to know what's happening and to help you and communicate with you. And excited to do that. Right. Oh my God. I, mean, I love it. I mean, thing. how much fun, right? Why would I yeah. do this if I wasn't excited to do it? Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. I have one final wrap up question that I ask everyone. What does success look like to you now as you sit here today? I feel like I'm really proud of my work. I am confident in my talent, but I feel like if I can do better with the generation behind me, I look at the generation that came before me and I think that sometimes they were hard on us. It's true. You know, there were some that really, really beat us down a little bit, but also they made us so much better. And I don't feel like my generation is bringing up. It feels like there's this wall between 35-year-old 706 members that are new to the local and people like me that have been members for more than 20 years. If I can fix that, if I can figure out how to break that barrier so that I can give them my knowledge, not just the hair, like even just the history, yes. the Hollywood history, we have a really beautiful, complicated history. Sometimes we haven't done it that great. Sometimes we've done it really great. And I feel like there's somehow we're not communicating that enough. You know, I just found out that the film industry started in New Jersey. Did you know that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. By the mafia. No idea. Yeah, that's why we're here. It's because they were like, I don't want to be controlled by the mafia. Off to literally the absolute other side I of the country. I heard it was the weather, but Okay. <laughs> That's amazing, too. Well, the weather is great, but also let's get as far away from the mob as possible. Wow. New Jersey, of course. The amazing. Jersey, of course. Thank you so much. So we're going to switch to the visual. So everyone who wants to take a look at some of these looks that we're going to be doing, you can find it on our socials and we will post links to that. And thank you so much for this thank wonderful you. chat. Oh, I good. just adore you. I can't I even adore tell you. you too. Yay. <laughs> Next week on Audrey Helps Actors, we've got Joe Marie Lawrence, winner, self-tape May 2023. She's incredible. We had a fantastic chat. We talk about all things, including agents stealing from you. Oh my God. You might've gotten stolen from recently and we are going to talk about it. We're also going to talk about actors with disabilities, advocating for yourself. We're going to talk about transitions in life, all of the incredible things. So I am excited. She is incredible. Thanks so much, Teresa, for being one of the great highlights of 2023 and going forward. I couldn't be more grateful to you if I tried. This industry is so lucky to have you and the fact that our paths cross in this horribly traumatizing way of these multiple strikes is just a bright beacon of blessings that can come out of the darkness. So thank you so much for being so wonderful. This episode was mixed and mastered by Thomas Hank Snodgrass. Is he in Long Beach? He sure is. Does he surf all the time? He sure does. Hang 10, buddy. This episode is produced by Jesse Lumen. Still so handsome. What is wrong with him? What is wrong with you? It's not fair, but it is appreciated. This episode was edited by Matthew Patrick Davis. Matthew Patrick Davis. Check him out. He's an incredible actor and a fantastic person. Show music by Ari De Niro. Ari, we appreciate you. Theme song is by the incredible Alok Mehta and 108 Hill. He is one of my favorite people on earth. All right, everyone. Don't forget your towel. Don't forget your towel. Do not forget your towel.